Good morning, everybody. One second here. Okay. Hey, Mary from Country Sheet Paint. How's everybody doing today? Uh, just going to give some people some time to get on. Um, this is what we're working on today. I've got another one just off to the side. It's a pair. Don't usually find nightstands, two of them, usually just one. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, gonna make sure that I can just get the comments going. Um, if you have an account, be sure to comment, let me know where you're coming from, say hello. Um, it's 11 o'clock on British Columbia West Coast side. Hope you're all doing good. Okay, so this is a distressing video for Country Sheet Paint. Uh, just a good example of the wet distress method using a damp cloth. Um, two colors are being used today. Um, and a third actually. So I painted these already in the color Pop the Bubbly, which is this really nice um, light kind of mushroom tone. Very, very pastel. Very nice. All right. Got that ready. Um, so here's the second one. I let them dry overnight. Um, with the distressing method, if you're doing two colors and you want to reveal the um, under layer, make sure you give that plenty of time to dry. So I painted these um, last night and then did one quick uh, second coat just this morning about four hours ago. Um, so I've got dark roast which is a really nice dark espresso kind of coffee bean brown. I've already kind of sort of applied that on here. Gonna let that dry for about 15 minutes while we're filming and then I will show you how to wipe that off. And already did the drawers, really cute kind of rounded edges. Um, for prep on this piece, it was a completely faux wood, kind of weird melamine. Um, it had this sickly yellow white color with fake distressing. Um, my mom had them for years, so now um, I'm just going to give it a nice farmhouse upcycle. Um, she doesn't know what color her decor is going to be yet, so just going to go with a nice neutral tone that she can dress up with decor. So I'm going to do some magic with that. Oh, hey Brigitte, thanks for checking in. Okay, yeah, and anybody else tuning in, let me know where you're coming from. Um, got my dark roast brush. Just going to get started because it does take some time to dry while we're doing this. Not too long. I'm working in a pretty dry space right now, so I'm taking into account that that will speed up dry times. If you're curious about how to distress paint in general, just maybe you only have one coat of paint and you want to reveal the nice wood tone, be sure to check out our tutorials on the Country Sheet Paint uh, website, just .com. Very easy. Let me make sure I get the front here too. Basically, um, for this one with two colors, you want to lay down a nice, good coat of paint that has had some time to dry, and then go over it again with another coat of paint that contrasts. Um, you can pick a bright color. Um, I love seeing a nice pop of bright teal and then a nice neutral on top of that or anything kind of similar. Great looks can be achieved. We also have some good distressing examples on the colors page if you wanted to take a look at that. Right at the bottom, underneath all of our collection, there's some already done examples if you're curious what ones look good together. And some colors and some surfaces might take two coats of the second uh, layer. So for instance, dark roast is looking a little streaky on this side, as you can see my brush marks. I can just very easily go over that a second time. It's not going to make it harder to distress later. So just going to touch that up there too. Might as well do the whole side. And I had just gone over that maybe 15 minutes ago, but it's pretty warm in here, so everything's drying fast. If you're bringing, getting texture that you don't want, um, stop and let everything dry because you're overworking the paint. All right. There's three ways to distress. I'm just going to show the wet distressing one today. Um, we have a beeswax bar that you can rub all over the, the first paint color, and then you apply paint. And then kind of wet distress again with the cloth, but anywhere that beeswax was rubbed all over, um, the new paint won't quite adhere, so it will come off a lot easier in those areas. Kind of creates a chippy finish, sort of like milk paint, so if that's what you're going for, uh, try the beeswax bar. Otherwise, there's classic sanding um, with a block or a pad. You usually use something like 180 or 200 grit if you have that. Um, you just pass that over any of the grooves, details, edges, and that also creates it. 
Um, sanding can be a little messy if you're indoors, maybe you're working in your living room apartment. Um, the, the wet cloth might be a lot cleaner, easier. And especially if you're doing two colors, um, you have more control with the cloth so you don't accidentally go too far down to the wood. Maybe you're trying to cover that up or it's a ugly, sickly yellow melamine like I was working with. Um, so I'm going to do the wet distress so I have more control and I can just take off dark roast instead of the whole thing. <clears throat> and I'll show you how to do some nice uh, subtle distressing. Sometimes when people start out they kind of get that spotted cow look where you decide to distress right in the middle of a piece or just really odd spots I find. So this might help uh, if you're running into that. Um, just some tips. Oops, a little streaky on that side. And also just a heads up, uh, it's another giveaway day. So we do give away uh, $50 on our website, countrychicpaint.com. We give you a coupon. Uh, all you have to do is comment to win after this video has gone up. Um, I, I would love to hear your comments while we're live so I can just know that someone's watching. But uh, after the video is done for the next 24 hours, we'll be looking for comments and then we'll pick a winner and reach out to them below in this uh, video comments. So just something to look forward to. Some nice shopping money. Maybe you'd like to do a project just like this or something totally different. If you're looking for ideas, be sure to check out all the other videos or subscribe for more ideas. And let me know in the comments uh, what maybe you'd like to see. Always looking for ideas, what people are, are looking for that maybe they haven't found on Pinterest. Maybe you need some inspiration. I'd be happy to help. Um, since dark roast is going to be the top layer, I really want to make sure I get it in everywhere because it would be kind of weird to still see Pop the Bubbly poking through in the corners. Um, we want it to look like this piece was um, once upon a time Pop the Bubbly, but then it's been painted over in dark roast, but slowly wearing away. So we want to create that effect, but we would have done a really good job painting over it before we distressed it. So I've got to cover those areas. And if you're finding you're having trouble getting a brush or a sponge into those kind of crevices, um, try an artist brush. Um, little guys like these, they help a lot. I have a set kind of handy for any project. I definitely use them almost every time. Oops, just trying to cover some ground so this dries while we film. Nice thin coats. Um, I am going for a deliberate rustic effect, so my brush marks are kind of all over the place but I am trying to keep a nice thin coat so it dries well. And one more tip, if you, if you find that you are working out the under layer, let's say uh, Pop the Bubbly is coming off as well as um, Dark Roast and you can see the wood, that's a sign that maybe Pop the Bubbly didn't stick very well and you need to uh, work on your prep or just be a little careful, um, wait for things to dry a little longer perhaps. And the best part is, if you're distressing and you find you do too much, you can just always paint over it again. Um, and then try that area one more time. You can always fix those. Oops. Just gotta get the legs. Really cute, petite nightstands. These would be great if you don't have a lot of space. I think I did, yes, I did two coats of Pop the Bubbly on the bottom um, all over. I really wanted to make sure I covered that nasty melamine. I used our clear bonding primer for prep. Um, that is this guy right here. It looks kind of murky in the jar, um, but it does dry clear. I did two coats because I'm never sure if I miss any spots. It is clear after all. Um, just used my little sponge and I had let that dry for about 12 hours overnight. 
that I painted and waited to do dark roast for you guys. Let me know what you guys think of the color. It's a really nice dark brown. I usually don't put it on top. I usually actually use it as a base coat to look like wood if I'm working with something ugly, but I really like it on top. It's a nice one. And kind of making random directions here. You'll see why in a moment when everything dries. Um, when you use the cloth, it kind of highlights that texture and gives it a really nice rugged look. That sometimes a really nice clean finish, maybe sometimes when you sand between the coats, you can lose some of that texture. And if you wanted to do that, perfect. But with this piece, you definitely want to kind of age it up, give it a nice new look. The, the hardware that I removed was cute too. It's just little brass knobs, so I might keep those with it. Um, kind of goes with the theme. So, um, more spots peeking through that I want to cover. paint the drawer insides a nice pop of color, maybe a blue or a pink. Make it more fun. painting this side. Uh, this side is already drying up. Pretty nice. I was hoping to have time to maybe have done one example already, but ran out of time today. Sorry. Get to see it all. <clears throat> and I'm not going to worry about the underside. Uh, no one's ever going to see that um, on this particular piece. I really doubt it, and if they do, I don't think they'll mind. Um, so, I just need to do the outside. I'd say um, maybe you could get away with a sample for one each. Uh, maybe if you stretched it, um, you could just do two samples, uh, our four ounce jars. These kind of uh, pieces are really great to start with if you're just breaking into painting furniture. Um, maybe you have something like this already at home. Uh, just take a look around, see what might need some paint. So definitely going to want to go over that area. Didn't quite cover. Keeping them pretty thin coats though. Try not to knock the table over. Has anybody ever done that? You're just trying to move around the project, then you dump it right over the, the table that you're working on. That's always the best part. Wondering if you broke it. <laughs> Sometimes it helps to prop the legs up on paint jars. If you're not wanting to get your surface dirty or lay down some cardboard or a bed sheet. Normally, um, I like to do just a little bit inside the drawer. Um, if I can, I would get in all the way. Um, but just sometimes when you push the drawer back in, you can see that. And I wouldn't want a nice sharp white line there. 
just be a little girl. light piece. Um, sometimes you can tell if you're working with faux wood. Not always a bad thing, but you can tell sometimes when it's super really super light, maybe when you picked it up uh, from the thrift store or curbside, um, you'll notice that it's probably not real wood from the get-go. Or when you go to sand, you'll kind of peel back and realize it's pressed board. So little things to look out for. Always good to do a little bit of a uh, test swatch of the paint, see how it adheres overnight, if you can scratch it off, maybe do some prep. Um, but always check, are you working with real wood? Because some of that veneer, all of those finishings are very convincing. So, oh, we got some Vancouver Island ladies. Thanks for tuning in. Good morning. Okay, just going to work on a drawer or two. We've got the fronts here. Didn't do, oh, if you want to see what this looked like, it's kind of a weird off yellow, it's very shiny, it was a spray finish, um, you can tell when they, they didn't quite spray all the way to the end that it's just some weird plastic particle board uh, kind of inserts, so that was all over the piece, it was, they weren't pretty. <laughs> I, I don't think I took a before unfortunately, sorry. And I want to paint the insides, and I think I'm going to do the insides in Nightfall. This like pretty kind of powdery Robin's Egg blue. I think those two would go together. And I did my sides. Um, I did prime the back, but I just haven't painted them yet. I don't know if I would bother. Um, if it's your own piece, your call. Nice thin coats. I think we can almost start wiping that one off pretty soon. I want to be able to show that method. Um, quite warm in here, so that wouldn't take long. I kind of like to just do complete the underside just a little bit. in the comments if you guys have ever done a farmhouse kind of finish or uh, what your favorite combination of neutrals are. We have quite a few if you want to check out the colors page. Um, one of the ones that I like to go for which looks a little similar but it is a white is vanilla frosting. Um, really does look like uh, buttercream frosting. It's really nice. Can't eat it though. Um, very nice over natural wood just to stress that back a little bit. Definitely do the wet distress method with those kind of paints. We also have Canapé, which is kind of a nice uh, milkshake brown. I considered using that, but unfortunately I didn't have enough to do two nightstands. I had about half of a four ounce sample. Not sure if that was going to cover. Didn't want to find out in the middle of the video if we ran out of paint, so um, dark roast it is. I do like this brown. Just never tried it on top before. It does look, it might look a little black in the photo, but it isn't. Um, or in the video, sorry. Finish up those edges, make sure you catch all the goop. Um, sometimes if that dries, I, I noticed I did that um, up here, I left a lot of paint collecting. I just used a 220 grit to sand off any of that unwanted texture um, in those areas because that can make the, it a little harder to open the drawers uh, next time. So, And if you are dealing with sticky drawers, maybe you've applied quite a bit of paint or this isn't your first time painting it, 
and now it's just getting more built up, a little harder to pull out of the drawer every time. Uh, try adding a bit of natural wax or even just beeswax bar or if you have a candlestick that is uh, colorless, go ahead and rub that on the rungs or along the edges and it might be a little easier. Um, even along here, that might help um, them glide back in. Did not know that until I started using furniture paint. Lots of hacks. I'm gonna let that guy try too. I think we'll at least have time to do one nightstand. See how it looks distressed? I always like kind of adding uh, a little more to it, like maybe a stencil um, or a wax if it's not quite dark enough. Um, but I think with dark roast, it should be just fine. With these kind of tables, um, they're low traffic. Um, they're, they're more decorative than anything. As you can see, they're kind of too small to be 100% functional. Um, but uh, maybe just a nice light wax or use some hemp oil or just leave them as is. In that case, um, I would give it a really nice fine sanding so it's nice and soft to the touch. Um, matte paint dried, feels pretty nice on its own. Like it's, it's okay, but if you've ever used 220 after you're done, it's really, really nice and soft, even better. Cheesecake is my favorite white. Yes, um, that's our warmest one. It's a really nice creamy white. I love that color too. It's very popular in kitchens. If you're needing a warm tone, it's gorgeous. And that with a bit of antiquing wax. Always looks good. I'm just making all sorts of mess here. Gotta have just enough paint on the brush. Yeah, I think it's drying. Give these a second to dry. Um, I think actually I'm gonna take this down and we're gonna try the other nightstand. I do have my cloths ready and a cup of water. Let's see how that Okay. It's very easy to fix this too. Like I said, you just paint over anything you don't like. Um, try it again. So I've got my cup of water, lint-free cloth. I like to use uh, Jake Gloss or Frank Gloss from the hardware store or Canadian Tire if you're in Canada. Um, really nice. You want to make sure it's lint-free. These are reusable dish cloths. Um, so I've got that a little damp. It's not dripping. Nothing comes out when I'm done. You might want to have a few if you're doing a, a larger project. Just gonna start, um, it's nice to just lighter pressure, start slow. Um, as this was just painted, I, I barely have to apply any pressure and it's gonna come right off. But if maybe uh, you didn't have time to get to your project right away, so I suggest if you find that it's hard to get the second coat off, use something like this. Uh, you can use this end or this end, whichever. Make sure it's a little damp as well. This will help work off the paint as well without kind of working into the wood. Um, you'll have more control and it might be easier than the cloth if you find that the paint is too dry. But all I'm doing is really lightly just have a nice smooth collection of cloth here using my finger underneath to just gently push some of it back. I want to highlight some of that. Just show it off. I want to um, kind of show off more pop the bubbly than normal. I usually just lightly distress, but I think with this one I want to go heavier. And then if I go too crazy, I can just paint over it. <laughs> so I like to start with all the grooves and um, outline all of them and see what that looks like. And then go in more. But if you like to just go crazy, start with that. Um, maybe practice with the back of the piece first. Um, I'm just starting with the side. And with the wet distressing, if you um, don't wipe up that extra um, sometimes the dark roast will kind of dampen, like it'll, you'll reactivate it and you'll be working it over the pop the bubbly and it kind of stains it. I like that look because it's almost like antiquing wax. 
Um, but if you'd like, you can let that dry for just a couple extra seconds and then go over it with a cleaner part of the cloth so you have nice clean lines of pop the bubbly versus dark roast instead of it sort of bleeding into each other. But sometimes it's, it kind of lends that natural look when it waters down and crosses over. <laughs> So there's two grooves here. I'm going to start with the top one and then the bottom one. It's already kind of drying. I might have to grab that other cloth. It's, it's quite warm in here. And I want to see, make sure you guys can see on camera. So really simple. Just a little bit of elbow pressure and have a nice distressed finish. Has anybody ever tried this? Um, what's your go-to method, I guess, for distressing? I'd love to know if you guys prefer sanding or if the damp cloth is something you would do. So deliberately working it up there. Don't know if you can see. There's some definition. I'll move uh, the camera closer so you can see the texture in a moment. And like I was saying about that, that spotted cow look, don't start right in the middle and then do this, unless that's what you want to do. Um, if you're trying to create a more vintage effect where there's going to be more pop bubbly, certainly. But uh, random spots probably isn't going to give you quite the look you have uh, are looking for. Um, just start with the edges and then work your way in. It's kind of the, the easier way. Then you can just kind of take a look back and see how you like it so far. Um, so I'm, I'm not really going to touch here. Not yet. I'm going to start with the legs because that's usually the easiest. show you what I do to the top as well. That will be important uh, working on a flat plain surface. How do you dress that up to make it look good? And fit right here. So it kind of helps to definitely work off the edges but then maybe go like this and then this like a little up and down. Um, that way it brings up that texture, especially if you cross-hatched your paint. Um, when it dries like that, it creates a really nice effect. Have sanded before but not tried the damp cloth? You definitely have to. Like I said, uh, mess-free. I'm not collecting anything. I don't have to vacuum it later. It's very nice and easy. If you're working in a garage, maybe you don't care, but sometimes wherever you're painting, it matters. Just rinsing out my cloth because I've collected a bit already of dark roast. I want to keep that clean. And I'm going to move... This just a little closer so you can see some detail here. Now it's a little patchy because we only did one coat, but this is sort of what we're going for here. See how it kind of forks like that? We've got some rough texture right here. You really want to create that just by making kind of random marks. Um, don't go in perfect circles for too long or you'll just be making perfect circles. Um, so just think about that. I think I want to go over this a second time, so I might not go too far, but as you, you might be able to see, this had some chipping old flaky paint here. That's kind of, oops, glare might not help. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but it's very nice. It's got this, this cool kind of weathered elephant skin sort of look to it. Um, sometimes help to have that kind of texture going on. This side is a little more opaque. We'll work with that. Again, kind of start with the bottom. And work it up on the edges.
So not right in the crevices, but kind of close to. Just imagine um, somebody has been cleaning this for years and years and years. It would naturally be kind of right around here that you would be working your elbows. So that's where the paint would start to flake first for your rustic finish. And all of those lines are being brought up from my messy marks, my brush marks, which I did on purpose to create this texture. And that's gonna help create that nice patch look without the spotted cow. <laughs> Just gently bring up some of that texture. Everything's rattling on the table here. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. So I might distress a little more on that one side. Dry in here. Okay. Ooh, um, yes, uh, P. Back says this method gives you more control than sanding. It does. Um, yes, uh, especially when you're doing two colors and you don't want to accidentally distress down to the finish, um, your original wood surface. Um, I can definitely tell when I've gone too far, whereas sanding, you definitely can sand if you want. Um, it makes a sharper look. It definitely gets the job done a little faster, but almost identical. It just depends on how you use it. Everybody kind of does it a little differently. You certainly can if you'd like. Similar, but um, I, I, I do prefer this and I'm making a mess. <laughs> so that too. So all of these marks are being brought up from my nice Messy brushes. Kind of want to keep it still dark roast in the center, but yeah, that's kind of how you, you work up the paint just a little bit. Um, you'll see that when it dries, the glare will go away. Um, I'm going to work on the edges here because the drawers definitely would have done a number to the paint finish on this. And if you've over distressed, you can always paint again. That's the best part. You just take an artist brush or the same brush you used and you just gently touch that up, let it dry, maybe for 20 minutes. Same thing. You don't wait too long with the second coat. Unlike uh, regular paint times, we say give it an hour. Um, you want to only give your wet distressing coats maybe about 20 minutes to dry. The longer you wait, the harder it is to distress with a cloth. Um, but you definitely can in some cases. Uh, I was working in a basement in winter, so I guess the dampness probably helped. Um, felt like the Crypt Keeper, but <laughs> uh, I, I was able to distress the next day. So a full 24 hours, I used a damp cloth on the second coat of paint, and it came up. So it does depend. Sometimes you can get lucky, but um, the temperature you're working in and the temperature it has to dry does have a difference. I think you can see some of that when you close the drawer. Just want to make sure it looks rustic as well. You wouldn't want to um, paint perfectly in dark roast and leave some of those areas. You definitely want to be thorough with your wet distressing. Anywhere I would apply this, I would definitely do this method all over. Got to rinse the cloth again. Sometimes it helps to have two. So you can see it. So even though I've only done one coat, I'm not terribly worried. So if you if you find you you don't have enough paint or you don't feel like doing a second coat, apologies. I think I just put paint on my face. Good thing you can't see. Okay, we're good. Um, <laughs> so if you don't have enough paint, you might only need to do one coat. So I can definitely see my brush marks from dark roast, but I'm not too worried because I am wiping a lot of it off now. Um, as well, um, you could get away if you don't have enough light color or your undercoat, maybe only paint the, the pop the bubbly in the areas you know you're going to distress. So you don't have to paint the whole piece twice if you don't want to, um, but then it does make it harder to remember where you distressed. So sometimes it helps to make big sections and then distress, just your call. Um, we do say kind of paint the whole piece as a rule of thumb though. 
and really making sure that that point is distressed because it would get the most wear, definitely. Anywhere that I see my brush marks from before that I don't feel like covering up, I'll just distress them back. Um, but if I want to cover them up, I'll just touch that up with some paint when everything has had some time to dry. Oops. Just put the leg in the lid. Smart. Um, I think that's the other side. We didn't want to touch it. Oh, I don't know what happened there. If you find that happens, I think that must have just been a paint drop that settled. Um, maybe don't spray your piece down, otherwise you will get that kind of spotted effect. Uh, just let that dry and touch it up again if you need to. Get a new spot of cloth. So I've got all my pesky brush marks that didn't quite cover the paint. No worries. Just distress that and make it look older. Made that almost too patchy for my liking, so you have some control until you don't. Um, sometimes it helps to uh, just let it dry. I might really gently, in areas, maybe right here, just kind of fill that in. I don't want it so big. But I like how that happened. Just very random. Sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> um, work on this side. Kind of more palm, less pressure. Just kind of really generally bring up the paint. See if I can get some of that brush texture. It's kind of a guessing game. Um, like, a, like I said, just touch up the paint if you're not happy with it. it does take a bit of finicky working, but it is worth it in the end, and I'd say this is a lot easier than, than sanding. Um, yeah, and I think I'll leave the center alone because it is needs a second coat right there, but the edges are absolutely fine. Bringing up that texture, it's got that nice worn look to it. Kind of going in different directions, seeing what happens. Nice. So that's pretty distressed. Um, got that going. Uh, make sure we get the legs all done. And I think we'll do a drawer. Distress that and the top. Probably have time for that. Really make sure that main line is taken care of. And I'm just going in kind of loose swirls all the way down to try and bring up just the paint on the edges of the legs. And definitely at the bottom. You wouldn't want to have like a perfect clean finish at the bottom. Make sure those are kind of more distressed than everything else. And usually the top gets a thorough working as well. And there might be more wear in the middle here. It's a well-worked space. There we go. So I had a lot of texture. There was even some drips. I didn't let those, um, I let them dry like that and didn't sand. So now they are captured nicely by dark roast with a little sanding, or wet distressing. Get those feet. All right. Just gonna rinse that again, it's getting quite gross. Do a drawer or two, show you how to do those. Um, again, a little streaky from just the one coat, but we are going to just do the sides here, show you how to do a flat regular surface. I'm just going to back this up. There we go. So this is just the regular surface, nice and flat. Maybe you're working with um, a very plain dresser. So I'll start with the edges. Like you're framing a picture, just kind of at an angle. 
They don't have to be even. Uh, nothing is supposed to kind of match up or line up. Really distress those edges. And then kind of gently work the paint on the outside. If you want more distressed on the inside, work from the outside in. And this is just my method of doing it. You can absolutely do it any way you like. Um, but I, I find this creates just a little more of natural wear. And that's just, wait for the glare here. That's a, that side versus the streaky, <laughs> not quite finished side, but just some nice distressing happening. I would do the same right here. And for the knob area, um, some, some folks like to distress right here because when you put the knob in, it will give that effect. You can definitely do that too. Um, I usually don't, I usually just stick to the outsides. Again, just looking for low kind of distressed wear. So I've got that going on. And make sure it's kind of captured the sides and bottom. Just a little bit of distressing. Slide that back a little bit. It's a little hard to get out without the knobs, but it's in there now. Okay. Oh, thanks, Crystal. I'm glad you guys are liking the tips. Um, I do this quite a bit. <laughs> um, we do have a lot of uh, folks on the Facebook group if you ever want to check that out. Everybody has uh, all sorts of experience. Great tips there too. I'm just going to do a second one. I want to show this one because it has a lot of texture. Um, I, I deliberately left kind of some of that old chipping stuff on there. So when I go to distress you see it. So instantly, not a lot of work needed. Can you see that, like, really cool? Probably not. Um, yeah, it just looks really, really weathered already. Much better than a soft finish. Sometimes having textured paint marks is a great thing. So yeah, definitely some more on the bottom. Definitely on the edges. A little bit distressing on that side and frame it in. Just like that. Didn't do the other side. I'll remember. Um, to give you the overall idea. Maybe this didn't go into this one. There we go. So we're kind of building a piece if you can see where it's going. I'm just going to do one more here. I need to just get that a little damp. That water is really gross. Definitely change it out if you can if you're at home. <laughs> so just a little bit of nice distressing again. Always start with the corners and the edges. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, definitely an elephant or gator skin or something. Like, it's just very interesting. It's catching all sorts of texture from that. So sometimes leaving behind some of your uneven finish is a plus, depending on the look you're going for. Less work is good for me. Look at that. Very nice. I think a stencil, like a, with some bronze cream, would be really pretty. Um, I do want to do the top for you, so I'm going to move that over. Back up close you go. Sorry about the shaking. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Janice. I appreciate it. Uh, happy to help. 
going to be doing the top now. Still have the same cloth. It had some time to dry. There's a couple patches peeking through, but I don't mind. Again, there's two grooves. Going to start with the two grooves all the way around first. No rush to just start distressing in the middle. That wouldn't happen in nature. So. So if you are trying to do something similar, um, the colors I used again for anybody tuning in are Pop the Bubbly and Dark Roast. Pop the Bubbly is the really nice light kind of mushroom taupe and then Dark Roast is the nice coffee bean brown. Just working the edges first and I am going to do, oops, trying not to tip it over, there we go, going to work on the outside in so really Give it like maybe a good couple centimeters of, I'm Canadian, centimeters of um, pop the bubbly peeking through. Want to have a nice, good definition of that lighter color. I think I might have to clean this cloth. It's just a bit too dirty right now. One second here. Water was dirty, had to go to the sink. New clean cloth, very important. Okay, so quite a bit right there. Gonna reveal that. Working up the other side as well. Kind of the circular motions, working very lightly. Not a lot of pressure here. I'm just trying to get that surface dampened a little bit. We're trying to just rework that top layer. That's all, that's all that's happening here. And all of those cross hatching marks I made are showing up. I'm very short, this is kind of hard to see. So let me know if it's not working. Oh boy, Whew, tippy toes. Exercising the calves here. So I want that nice rough grain. I'm not gonna try and distress that too much. I do want that kind of brushed look. Just soften up that one layer and then watch it kind of chip away. I don't think I would uh, distress the center really that much. Might if you're doing a really distressed look. The top would naturally see more wear than any other part, but let's see what this looks like first. Oh, hey Dallas from Alberta. Thanks for tuning in. All right. Oh, don't want that random patch. Remember what I said about the spotted cow? You definitely want to kind of make it a little more linear. There we go. Now I think there would be more distressing in the front. Not trying to make it uneven, but just definitely a bit more would have happened there. And I do have patches that I might cover instead of distress, but right here I definitely want to make this paint just a little looser all over on top. So now I just have the palm kind of pressure, very light, just trying to work up the top as a point, as instead of, you know, using the finger and working it. It's just broader pressure now. Just gotta go all the way around. Clean part of the cloth. Just gently work that up. I think I would leave that and then just touch up those areas um, that need a second coat of dark roast but I like the nice distressed areas on the outside Ooh, and I think that's that for today um, I did want to show the drawers being painted but uh, that's it's kind of a simple process you would just um, this is oops I don't even know if I can open nightfall right now sorry um, I plan on doing the inside of the drawers with this color, I believe, maybe Jitterbug if I have some of that. Um, Nightfall is a really great powder blue. Robin's egg, kind of a teal. Three colors there. Um, Alright, so this is pretty much it. I think I'm going to leave it for a bit, give it some time to dry. It's been worked on quite a bit. Um, can't quite open the drawers without the pulls. 
at the moment, but this is just a simple kind of wet distress method using Pop the Bubbly as the under layer and then Dark Roast as the top. Um, I hope you guys liked it. Subscribe, like this video if you did. Um, also, just wanted to remind everyone that the giveaway would start, um, our comment to win starts after this video has been uploaded. So uh, definitely save some comments for that. Uh, we'll be drawing in 24 hours time for a $50 coupon on our website. Um, hope to see you guys uh, next week. I'll be doing another project. I uh, haven't figured that one out yet, but we'll have a newsletter as well um, if you want to find out that way. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a really good day. Happy painting!